What is life all about? Are we pawns in a spiritual game, as reading the book of Job in its entirety would lead us to believe? Is creation ours to abuse as we wish because it is a gift to us? Or is it because we are the dominant species? Are we stewards of creation, part of it, because we have more ability and with more ability becomes more responsibility? Most would go for that. The book of Hebrews, when quoting the Old Testament, says that we are little lower than the angels. Angels are messengers, so perhaps we're like FedEx or Royal Mail, but messengers of what? Now this is the point we can get all over the place. What we purportedly say we're messengers of God, but then so many people say that, different different religions, different sanities, people saying that this is wrong and this is right, God says this, God says that. So perhaps we as Christians resort to the message of Jesus, but even then that gets treated very, very differently. Now I would say Jesus' message is love your neighbour. Some would say that we've been given the gift of the Holy Spirit, so we should just spread the message that the Spirit gives us. But yet again, how, how do we know what is God's message and what is not? So of course, as people of the book, we refer to the Bible. And essentially, we must refer to the message of the whole Bible, not just passages that we find important. Because we all find different passages resonate at different times in our lives. That's just being honest with ourselves. But because we are after the meaning of life, essentially, when we understand what life is all about, and therefore what our responsibility is all about, and our responsibility is to care for all creation, for ourselves, for one another, in which case, why then are we searching for the meaning of life? Because this is what life is all about. And yet people still ask, why are we here? What is the point? Several times I've asked the question, and I've also heard other people ask the same. Why is he still here? But that's life. In the words of Sinatra's song, that's life. We, we're riding high in April, we're shot down in May. We've been a poet, a pawn, a king, up and down, over and out. But we know one thing, when we find ourselves flat on our face, pick ourselves up and get back in the race. That's life. And what's the meaning behind it? Well, of course, we all know the meaning is 42, what certain generations do. But how do we get there? Now, there is a, an apocryphal story of, of, of a man who wanted to know what the meaning of life was. So he, he, he drove to Gatwick, called a plane to India. In India, he got a train at the end of the train track. He rented a jeep. He drove the jeep to the foothills and he borrowed a donkey at the end. He rode the donkey until the donkey could go no further. He walked up to the mountain to a guru's cave. He entered the mountain and the guru said that the meaning of life is mushrooms. So he, he, he went back. Uh, feet to the donkey, donkey to the uh, jeep, jeep to the train, train to the plane and back home. And, but the more he thought about it, he thought, mm, I don't know if the answer to the meaning of life is mushrooms. So he drove back to Gatwick, got on the plane to India, uh, got on the train, rented the jeep, hired the donkey and walked up to the guru's cave and said, it is not mushrooms. To which the guru replied, ah, right, then the answer is turnips. And it might as well be. Because we as Christians believe that the meaning of life is there and obvious. We are given life and so we need to live. We are given breath so we need to breathe. We are given intelligence so we need to problem solve. We are given love so we need to love. We are given emotions so we need to express inner feelings. We must express ourselves. And we have an importance in life, a responsibility and an accountability, but importance and that is how we respond to one another. We may not get it always right, we may not understand, but we get there, we can achieve, we can change, we can influence, and therefore we can acknowledge that there is something in life that we can respond to. Life is for living, living is now, now is the present. The present is us. So how do we respond? And life throws at us many things for which we are not prepared. Some wonderful times that we accept with humility and delight, and of course there are other challenging times, times that come out of the blue, unexpected, unimaginable. And the path of life through these times tends to follow a pattern. Numbness, shock, lack of comprehension, trying to fameth why, what, how, where, when, who, wrestling with the notion of an uncontrollable future whilst instinctively looking at the past to try to blame something. The anxiety, particularly with regards to the future, which suddenly seems even less controllable, takes hold. 
Fear overrides logic and reason. It predominates over hope, but hope does begin to find a fissure of light to shine through. And then we look back, we take stock, and we recognise our reactions and what motivated them, recognise the anxiety for what it is, emotion, adrenaline, fight or flight, and the heartache comes down. Nothing has changed except perhaps now we can interpret how we feel and then maybe make different decisions in our reactions. And as the protection flame fades, we let the fissure of hope take hold, illuminating so much more than the fissure. For light is more powerful than, than what we recognise. For one small light illuminates a room thousands of times bigger. So it is with hope. A little hope goes a long way. And then we begin to build our future, not forgetting or ignoring the past, but rather laying foundation stones for something that we know we want to aim for. A better life, better living, better relationships, not only with people but with creation. A greater understanding of our place in the world and how much damage we can do and how much good we can bring. And of course the latter needs to be greater than the former and that is a balance we need to continuously work towards. And that balance we call life.